Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to discuss on how we are going to develop a course in academic writing for learners of English as a second language. Writing is a complex task. It is more challenging than speaking, let alone the challenge of writing using a second language. In this particular discussion, the language is English. The English language has enjoyed a privileged status in the Philippine formal education since U.S. President McKinley declared it the medium of instruction in the Philippine public education system in the 1900s. This data is according to Alan B. Bernardo of De La Salle University. However, our learners and even college students still struggle with academic English and in particular writing. Yet, little research has been done or program developed to address the writing support needs of the Filipino learners. Now the question arises, what is an academic writing? Academic writing is a formal style of writing used in universities and scholarly publications. You'll encounter it in journal articles and books on academic topics, and you'll be expected to write your essays, research papers, and dissertation in academic style. So, what is the purpose of academic writing, and why do we need academic writing? What is the main purpose of academic writing? The most common purpose in academic writing is to explain some idea or research finding and to persuade readers that your explanation or theory is the correct one. And now, if we are going to create or develop an academic writing course, what are the factors we need to consider in developing an academic writing course. Number one, identify the core components of an academic writing course. What are the components of an academic writing? In English academic writing, there are three main parts of academic essays and research papers. Number one is the introduction. The introduction includes the important background information about the topic or an issue. And the introduction ends with a thesis statement. The thesis statement contains the whole idea or the problem that is going to be discussed in an essay or a, a research paper. The body, of course. Number two, the body. The whole or the the component of the whole essay or a research paper and of course the conclusion especially if the research paper on an essay is an argumentative essay or an argumentative research paper number two factor as a teacher we should gain an understanding of the competency with teaching process writing strategies and tools to help students become proficient academic writers. As the saying goes, we cannot give what we do not have. So therefore, firstly, we as a teachers need to immerse ourselves and be well versed in the writing strategies and tools to effectively identify the teaching methods we will apply to our class. As a teacher, we need to have the first-hand knowledge on how we will be able to help our students in their progress to become a proficient academic writer. Number two factor is we need to gain an understanding of and competency with teaching, reading, and research strategies in tools to help students become proficient academic writers. Then with number two, we need to be proficient with the strategies in research and teaching reading because a research paper or a researcher needs to be 
a wide feeder for for them to be able to gain information gain surveys on how they would be able to conduct the research number four factor in considering developing an academic writing course is to understand and be able to teach the principles of academic summary writing properly cite sources and teach students to do so of course a research will not be complete without a conclusion and summary that contains in a gist the whole point of the research and without its sources of information and thus we need to consider imparting the proper creation of a summary which contains the whole top of the research paper or an essay and proper site of resources because we don't need or we don't want to commit the crime of plagiarism as a teacher and of course we don't want our learners to commit the same mistake of plagiarism so we need to teach them how to cite or properly cite their sources or resources on their output or their in their academic output number five factor that we need to consider in creating an academic course academic writing course is to understand and be able to teach the principles of argumentative writing the question is why is it important to understand that argumentative writing well of course because people don't always agree on a single point of view an effective worded argument help us arrive at what is fair or true it is used to settle disputes and discover truth we said that the main purpose of academic writing is to give an argument or to persuade an audience that your thought is the correct one and of course that argument should be based on the truth number six factor is to show ability to provide feedback and assess student writing it is always the role of the teacher to provide feedback and assess the progress of the learners of course as a teacher we need to be able to give them the assessment or assess their progress and lastly the last factor that we need to consider in developing an academic writing course is to create a syllabus just like we were taught in college as a teacher just like a lesson plan for a course to be successful in attaining its objectives we should create a guide in a form of a syllabus Now, let us come to the actual writing of outputs. In academic writing, you must consider many factors. The ones we will briefly discuss here are six general points you should take into consideration while writing academic papers. Number one factor in writing is the audience. Considering your audience is something you should do before writing your paper. If you are a student, your audience will be your instructor who has definitely some expectations which you will have to meet. Your audience may also be advisors, thesis committees, and journal and conference reviewers. Taking your audience into account will affect the content of your writing. For example, if you assume that your readers are familiar with the subject you are writing about, you will not provide much background information. The next factor would be the purpose. Audience and purpose are interconnected. If the audience knows less than the writer, then purpose is instructional. 
But if the audience knows more than the writer, as is the case with students, the purpose will be demonstration of knowledge and expertise. So you should be aware of the purpose of your writing as it is a decisive factor. The next one would be organization. Organization is a matter of priorities and structure. Your audience has this expectation that the information will be presented in a structured format that is suitable for the genre of the text. So there are different patterns you should take advantage of because most readers are familiar with them and this helps facilitate the conveyance of information. Other factors such as relevance, coherence, and flow, cohesion and texture, context and message should be taken into account. Moreover, there are several established patterns of information organization which all writers make use depending on the nature of their paper. Problems and solutions, comparison, contrast, cost effect, and classification. The next factor that we need to consider is the style. You have to make sure that your writing is based on an appropriate style. The style should be consistent and suitable both in terms of audience and the message. Writing your research report in an informal style would be a grave mistake. Also, you should consider the fact that the academic style differs from one field to another. So by analyzing the papers in your chosen field of study, you will become familiar with styles used in your field. The next factor, the flow. Another important factor is flow. It means moving from one statement in the text to another. It is obvious that by keeping the flow and making clear connection of ideas and concepts, you will help your audience to follow the text. One of the most commonly used methods of for establishing a flow is moving from old information to new information. By stating old information, first you can provide some brief background information and then state your assumptions or conclusion and establish a connection between them. Example, although it is believed to connect the world together, internet can have negative impact on some cultures. We will focus on linking words and phrases later on. These elements can help the writer maintain the flow of information and establish clear relationships between ideas and concepts. And the last factor, the presentation. Before presenting your paper, Ask yourself, yourself these questions. Are information flow and overall format good enough? Is your paper grammatically accurate? Have you checked for spelling errors? So these are the things that are discussed tonight and hopefully I was able to impart knowledge that is helpful for everybody. Good evening and thank you.